All right, today we're going to be working on creating an eight measure melody in note flight. So we've already gotten to our file that we're going to start working on. Uh, in our last assignment, we learned how to put a title. So you can go ahead and do that. All right, now, <clears throat> the next tempo, the next thing we're going to do is set a tempo. All right, now, our minimum tempo for this assignment is going to be 72, but you can change it to whatever you want. I'm going to make mine 92 for now. Next, we have select the instrument that you play in band. Or if you're a mallet, if you're a percussionist, you should choose mallet percussion. Now, you do this by clicking parts tab at the top right hand of the screen. That's up here, right here, it says parts. And right now it says piano. Um, I'm going to add, and uh, today I'm going to be a saxophone player. So I'll add the saxophone, and I'm going to get rid of piano, because I don't need the piano. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is change the key, which I don't think we've technically done before. All right, now if you look here, we've got all the different um, toolbars that we could possibly have. And the one we need here is the measure toolbar. If you look up here, you'll see score and then edit and then duration. They kind of come in the order that they are. So if you're looking across, here's the one that says measure. And under the measure toolbar, you're going to choose the key signature tab. At this point, it shows you all the different concert key signatures. We're going to do this exercise in the key of concert D flat, because that's the scale that we left off on, and that's the scale that you're going to be tested on next. All right, so we're going to select the key of concert D flat and click OK. Now notice it went directly to five flat. All right, now the key of concert D flat is not going to be a five flat scale for everybody. So the next step is to make sure that we change this to a transposing score. All right, what that means is that the clarinet part is going to look right to the clarinet and the alto part is going to look right to the alto. And um, currently it's just set to concert pitch, which means it's the right music to play on piano. So um, to get the transposing score, you're going to go to the score uh, toolbar. And the second icon from the left, it looks like, um, no, it's a, it's a fork. It's a tuning fork. All right, so you're going to click on that. Notice it says show in constant pitch. And as I click it over and over, it goes back and forth. When it has five flats, it's set to show in concert pitch. But when you deselect that, it now is in the proper key for your instrument, all right, which for alto saxes would have two flats. All right, now we're going to get to writing our melody, all right. What we're doing here is writing an eight measure melody, and <clears throat> I have given you the explanation of what I'm looking for on the Google Doc that I sent to you. All right, um, so we're just going to add a few things in here real quick. Now, in the interest of time, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep writing. I notice when I got past my first four measures, if I just kept adding notes by you know hitting the letters on the keyboard, it would add measures for me. But if you'd like to add measures manually at the beginning, you can go back up to the measure toolbar, which is right here. And you can just click plus, and it will add measures. Or you can click minus, and it will delete measure 
that you have highlighted. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need one more measure, so we're going to make that eight. And I'm going to make my rest of my melody here. All right, now notice I did not follow all the rules. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not taking the time to go through making sure I have all the different note values I'm asking you for. All right, now notice when I got to the end of the eight measures, it added another one of the assumed I was going on. So you're going to want to make sure that you delete that final measure so you only have exactly eight measures. All right, now, now that you have your melody, this is something that some people had a little bit of trouble with in the past. Um, oh, by the way, where it says lyricist, let's just put our instrument name. That way we know what instrument is supposed to be written for. Now, the next thing we need to do is export this as a PDF. All right. Now, in order to do that, we need to go to the print icon which is right here, okay? Now don't click that. Right next to that, you have the save button, which is always important to do, save your work. And then the next one is a cloud with a down arrow. That is export. When you click export, it gives you a whole bunch of different options. You can actually export the sound file. Uh, you, you, can, uh, you can export a few different things that you may not understand here, uh, which we don't need. But we're going to go with export for now. We can just do the full score PDF. All right. And we're going to continue with that. When you do that, it's going to ask you um, to save it. So we're going to click save. And now it gives you an opportunity to save wherever you want to save your file. All right, so I am going to save this in my music first assignments. Save, and now that will be where you want it to be. But at that point, <clears throat> you would take that and attach it in Google Classroom so that you can hand it in. All right, now, let's show you some information about how I'm going to be grading this. I think that would be helpful for you. All right, here's a rubric that I'm going to be using. And there are a whole bunch of things that I've asked you to do in the instructions, and each one of those is going to be worth a certain amount of points, all right? Um, I don't know if it's going to be the exact amount of points, but if it's not, you know, exactly these amounts, it will be um, the same idea, all right? So first, note values. I'm asking for at least one whole note, half note, quarter, and eighth note, all right? Um, if you don't have all of them, then it would be worth less points. For your rests, I'm looking for certain rest values to be a part of your melody. I'm looking for it to be eight measures in length. All right. Not less, not more. I'm looking for all of your notes to be a part of the concert D flat major scale. You can go within one octave. You can go within two octaves. You can use parts of octaves. As long as all the notes are part of the proper key, then we're good to go. Now, instructions, of course, we need to create our title, um, your name, your instrument, a key signature, a tempo, and making sure you transpose the score for your instrument. All right, each of these instructions missed would, you know, be um, less points in your rubric. All right, and finally, the performance is not extra credit. The performance 
um, is a requirement. And um, we're going to be looking for you to record that. Um, and I'll explain that to you um, in the Google Doc and in your uh, Google Classroom. All right. A couple of tips about composing music. I have put this uh, in the file that you'll receive in Google Classroom. Number one, difficulty level. You want to make sure this is something that you can play and something that other people your age can play. All right. Um, let's make this, you know, appropriate for the people who are in your class. As far as rhythmic pattern, you want to try to be uh, reasonable with your rhythms. You want it to flow. You don't want it just to sound like you chose random rhythms. You want to make a nice um, rhythm, combination of rhythms so that it sounds like a song. Your melody, third bullet here, would, uh, you know, we're looking to create a linear melody without too many jumps, for instance. Um, linear would sound like this. All right, it went, you know, from one note to the next. It, it was, you know, linear, linearly means it's going in a line. It's kind of connected. This would be lots of jumps. Sure, that works. That, that can be done. But it wasn't as comfortable for the listener. And most music is not really written that way. So we're trying to make a nice lyrical and linear melody. The next thing I have here is about form. Think about writing music as if you were writing a sentence or a paragraph uh, or a chapter or a novel. Um, right now, we're only writing eight measures. So this is kind of like writing a sentence. And we want to make sure it starts comfortably. It has some material in the middle that's relevant. And then it concludes in a way that makes it feel like it is over the way you knew that sentence was over. Now, often in an eight-measure melody, I wrote here, you can end uh, measure four with what feels like a comma. All right? So, for instance, if I was having a sentence and the sentence is going to be an eight-measure sentence, it might go like this. So today we're going to be working on something... And no, that actually didn't work very well. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to give you an example of form that, that scratch that, make believe I didn't say any of that. Um, I thought I could improvise that, but it didn't work. But the point is you're going to want to have kind of a pause, a good place to take a breath. All right. So you're going to start often most comfortably on the first, third, fifth, or eighth note of a scale. In the middle, you can use any of the scale notes as you go through, try to keep it, keep it linear. And then at the end of the fourth measure, this is where your comma is going to be. And that pause can pretty much be on any note that you want. But if you want it to really sound to everybody like you really knew what you were doing, you'd want to try to stop on the fifth, the seventh, or the second note of the scale, in my opinion. Um, those are really good notes. There are reasons that I'm not going to explain right now. And at the end, if you really want to make it sound like it's completed, you're going to finish on either the root, which is the first note, or the octave, which is the eighth note. All right? The bottom or the top note of the scale. There are so many other options, but when you're playing as a solo and we're playing the level of music that we're playing in um, – you know, uh, not not the most advanced stuff right now because um, it's our first composition. You're going to want to end on something that feels really final. All right, so those are my tips for creating an eight-measure melody um, and also uh, things that I found through the years that I have had to make the most comments about. All right, I don't recommend using crazy rhythms and crazy rests and 16th and 32nd notes and anything weird. Keep it simple. Keep it 
um, friendly, keep it something that you can perfect for a performance, which you will submit, and also um, make it something that's friendly that you believe, you know, at least half of the class would be able to comfortably play without having to spend too much time working on it. All right, hope you enjoy this project, and I look forward to seeing the results and hearing them.